has potential. What they're trying to do is give you a bigger bullet in a 9mm, not more recoil, for more terminal ballistics on a target. So much of the ammo that we see at, a, at SHOT Show every year is complete magical <laughs> snake oil. Yeah. All right, unfortunately, we got to shoot the Pico here yesterday at the range day, and it is possibly the worst gun we've run into here at the show so far. Part of that is this mag release, which is rather awkward um, to use. You really have to use two fingers to pull it out. In addition, I found the grip to be both very slick and very narrow. I thought it was a, gave you a pretty poor grip, honestly. Um, the base plate on the magazine doesn't really help at all. Uh, and we had a whole bunch of problems with malfunctions on it. Yep, I tried to fire it a number of times. It would actually, it didn't cycle multiple times and I had to hit the the slide into battery. Yep. Um, and the recoil was harsh and fierce for the size of the gun. Yep. And if there was anything worse than the fact that the gun fired, did not fire properly and was malfunction prone and the recoil sucked, the magazine release was possibly the worst thing I've ever felt on any gun, surplus or mock. I cannot not recommend this gun highly enough. <laughs> Yeah. Avoid, avoid, avoid. And by the way, Pico is only one letter away from Pika. And Pika is a strange mental disorder where people eat dirt. And that's where this gun belongs. The designer of the gun had clearly not been instructed to beat about the bush. Make it evil, he'd been told. Make it totally clear that this gun has a right end and a wrong end. Make it totally clear for anyone standing at the wrong end that things are going badly for them. If that means sticking a bunch of spikes and prongs and blackened bits all over it, then so be it. This is not a gun for hanging over the fireplace or sticking in the umbrella stand. It is a gun for going out and making people miserable with. Carl and Ian looked at the gun unhappily. This is called the Raptor grip. Actually kind of a bird head design. Like, <laughs> but it's a great home defense firearm. Okay. I this is not something I would normally associate with a home defense arm. This seems like something that actually would be quite difficult to control with no buttstock. Uh, actually, it's not. And the reason being this grip, uh, you know, uh, people are kind of familiar with pistol grips. And I think that's a little more uncomfortable for people because you take most of the recoil in your hand. But the ability to use this grip is more of a traditional recoil. So you're not exactly, you're not absorbing it all in your hand. You're able actually to naturally handle the recoil. I, I picture people you trying to use the bead sight on that and lining it up in their eye and taking the recoil in their teeth. No, no, and that's one of the keys here. This is actually not one you have to sight. If you think about a home defense scenario, in most cases, you know, 10 yards, maybe a little bit further, it's really more of a point and shoot type scenario, so not so much aiming. But you can actually comfortably handle this, like bracing it here at the hip. I have no trouble shooting it like this with actually not bracing it. Again, the advantage of the mini shells too, they have reduced recoil. Uh, so it's, I found it very comfortable to shoot. Um, no what, kind of, what kind of choke do you have on it? Do you know how it patterns? Uh, you know, actually I've not personally done any patterning. We shot it yesterday at range day out to 25 yards and people were pretty impressed with the pattern. This is not typically a 25 yard gun though. Well, I'm mostly curious about how open the pattern actually is. If you're shooting from the hip inside the home at typically five to 10 yards, you're not really going to get any dispersion of your shot column and you're going to have to aim it if you want to hit anything. Uh, we were recently at SHOT Show 2017 and Ian kind of grilled the Mossberg lady rep regarding their new Shockwave model. Uh, the Mossberg guys have done some interesting stuff in the past. You may remember their chainsaw shotgun, which maybe that would be, well, maybe that you could... <laughs> sure what to say about that thing. A modernized M1 carbine with a Hilux. I think it had a Hilux scope on it. I did not catch the scope brand. You know, it, it felt fine. The trigger was fine. It actually, uh, I hit with every shot I fired at about 100 yards. Okay. But um, you know what's weird is like, my first initial impression was, wow, this has more recoil than my AR. That felt like more recoil than the, what was supposed to do rifle shoot 5.6, which is weird because it's 30 carbine. Uh, it's shooting a bullet twice as heavy. You know, I think the question I ask with stuff like that is, that's not inherently wrong. The question is, why? What is the what is the market for that? And at sixteen hundred dollars, I think there's a difference between modernizing and just putting black stuff on. That. Well, yeah, you know, modernizing I would expect to be an improvement in some way. I could see, you know, 
replacing the, the, the traditional stock yeah. with a pistol grip, yeah. I can see value in it. Yeah. I can see why people would want it. Yeah. But things like adding a collapsing buttstock to an M1 carbine, adding side rails, that I mean there's a ton of mass and stuff added to the front for no actual added benefit. Yep. For me at least, without having to be seen with a gun that looks like that. I have no counter to that except that that looks like it came out of Call of Duty. Call of Duty stuff sometimes looks good. Anyways, it worked, but why? Yeah. yeah. We didn't show you guys the arm brace version. No. Well, the, dot, the, the battery is dead. Yeah, the battery on the red dot on the arm brace version was dead. But anyways, let's move on. More stuff from Shot Shot Tony. All right. So this is a unique AR grip in that it conforms to your hand. You grip it, tighten the screw, and then you have a grip conformed to your grip. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that here. So you kind of grab onto it, and then you, you, you kind of kind of kind of get in there and you make sure you got it where, 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 you, where you where you want it like 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 that and then you turn it and then yeah see look at that now this is ribbed so that it's actually very pleasurable to hold and now you've got a grip that's for you specifically and only you it's now it's now your grip only your grip awesome okay are the fins straight or are they curved do the fins actually impart a rotation to the projectile? So right now they're straight. Okay. Um, so it's like a rocket ship. A rocket shoots straight. So that's essentially what we've done. Okay. Would you get better accuracy by giving it some rotation, like a Foster Slug? Um, so there's actually three different ways you can stabilize projectiles. Right. There is uh, the spin, which everyone knows of. <laughs> and then you have the flared. Mm -hmm. Drag. Which is like a shuttlecock. And then you have fin stabilization. And then the other two stabilizations don't need spin to stabilize them. They okay. fly straight. So we could add spins, but the spin isn't really needed with the fin. Not concerned. So not concerned. Okay. Can you actually make that projectile in 5.56, five, or is it too we small? Can. We can okay. make it in 5.56. Five, five, You're not going to have problems like the tail breaking off because it has to be small in diameter? No. Nope. It should be hard enough, and it should just work fine. Um, we are okay. still in production with it. and. We're still working with them and figuring out new ways on how to make different style of projectiles. But okay. right now, we're going with this one because it's easy to load, easy to put in. Okay. So. All right. And the honestly, the biggest question that occurred to me is, what does this do that a brace can't? Why would I? Why would I? If I could have no rifling and a, a proper stock, we have braces that are basic for all practical purposes identical to shoulder stocks and then I could use rifling with a short barrel. You could. What would be the advantage to this? The advantage to this is the stock. Stocks are a lot more comfortable than shoulder blades or stock or shoulder um, braces. Okay. Bring in tank technology into modern firearms. Which so, technology? Tank. Tank. Out of Abram tank. Okay. Abram tanks shoot bow rounds. Right. They're all smooth bore. Um, they do shoot faster, you know, feet per second, but you don't need that on the lower level. We're not pushing, you know, a really heavy round out. We're pushing smaller rounds out. Okay. So we don't need, you know, the, the 6,000 feet per second. Right. They're doing that for armor piercing. Yeah. And they're going six miles away. Okay. So, you know, I'm going to go six miles away with this 11 and a half inch barrel. Okay. So. What sort of accuracy do you get? I heard conflicting stories from different videos. So with videos. our ammunition, you're, we're getting around one MOA. Um, we didn't see too much at 50. It, it's random, but it does tumble. But then again, you have a short barrel rifle and you're shooting somebody at short distances with standard ammo. Now imagine a sideways bullet going through you. Okay. Which one would hurt more? You're actually envisioning this as a practical defensive rifle? Yeah, you can use that as a practical defensive rifle in the home or even, you know, at 100 yards because most people, you don't engage targets past 100 yards. But what you look at Abram tanks, they have thousands of designs for different styles of sabots and projectiles they shoot right. out of them. And they don't, you know, they're not, the only way they're stabilizing it is through fins. Right. It's not quite the same. They have much larger fin surface. They do. Because the fins are much larger in diameter than the body of the projectile. What I'm seeing with this is that, I mean... But then, all, all we're doing is scaling it down. Is it all copper? Yeah, it's all copper. There's no lead inside? Oh. Yeah, so if you scale everything it's down, right oh yeah, you're when that hits gel, it's gonna break and break, this snap right in the middle. Right here, but then you, like it. Yeah, you probably will. Exactly. Your barrier penetration is gonna be shit. Barrier penetration will be. Yeah. Um, but the sectional density on that's gonna be not good. No. 
but we do have different ideas of getting it. Honestly, I would never be willing to consider this as a practical rifle because of the accuracy. I, I, I like price point. I would, I'll be honest, I'm dubious about that. I'd have to see it myself. But what exactly happened? I think something happened with you and the in-range TV guys. So I instructed my staff that if, if Carl or Ian show up, that they need to talk to me before any interview is to be conducted. And the reason is, is that they did something that I didn't think was quite ethical last year. When okay. what happened was uh, they were doing an interview with Sun. They put the lid on the on the lens and continued on as if the interview was over. Okay. Still asking questions, but they were trying to trip him up into some kind of statement off recorded, but they were recording anyways. So if you happen to go back and look at their video, you'll see that it, it closes up and then they keep talking. Okay, so, and that's still published? That's still okay. published. And to okay. me, that's some shady stuff right there. So right. I had a problem with that and I just wanted to have one-on-one -on -one with them to, right. to say, hey, this is what it is mm -hmm. and you'll talk to me and that'll, I'll be the, your yeah. point of contact on that and that's got to stop. That can't happen. Okay. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to InRange TV. We were going to do a video for you about the new Providence from Franklin Armory. It's supposed to be a semi-automatic rifle that's not semi-automatic and there's some legal skirting there that's going on with that. When we went to talk to them about it, they were pretty much, we were told that we were, they were instructed to not talk to InRange TV. So we're not going to be able to provide you any coverage on that particular gun this year, innovative or not. So check out other venues on the internet about the Providence from Franklin Armory and we're going to move on with other stuff at SHOT Show. Trigger point technology, okay? It's the, the ability to turn this laser on and have a laser light yep. indicating where you would like for your bullet to go. If my finger now goes in on this trigger safety, none of this has been changed, this is all stock. When my finger touches the trigger safety, you'll notice that the light on the wall now begins to flash. So this one is for, this one is actually for where snipers really high-end users. So this is a fine example of a situation in which the practically untrained are making solutions for real-world problems that they don't understand. Um, he's saying it's for high-end users, but a moment before he spoke to us, he said it was for the civilian because law enforcement couldn't enter an area with their finger on the trigger. And actually, there's a goddamn Golly, good reason they can't do that. Why would you not want them to do that? And so if that means that's the case, I don't know about you, but do you really want the average user in their house afraid when someone's kicking their door to use the finger, a light finger pressure on their trigger to illuminate the target to determine if they want to shoot or not? Um, that seems like an extremely bad idea. Not just when they're kicking, someone's kicking the door, but when you hear a Pitter patter of little feet, well, and you're trying to figure out if it's your 10 year old kid or if it's a bird. What are you using? First of all, lights are great, and you need lights, but what are you using a light for? You're using a light to identify a friend or foe, or if you want to engage and kill a target. And you don't necessarily want to have the light on to present yourself as to where your location is. Got all that. Do you want your finger on the trigger to cause the illumination to occur to determine if you want to fire at that shape in your hallway? I'm thinking. I'm thinking no. that maybe. A bad idea, but that's indicative of the kind of stuff that's in this industry that, frankly, um, caviar emptor and get some training, please, please. On that note, are you looking at uh, different barrel profiles for suppressors in mind, or are you going to stick with a pencil? For it? 